Hi everybody and welcome back to our Star Trek Adventures game out here in the Shackleton Expanse. We're aboard Naranja Station once again this week with four awesome Trekkers um, and we're here to have some fun, possibly shoot some Romulans and just discover some amazing, amazing things in the universe. Uh, let's go around, see how everyone's doing this week as per usual. Anita, how are you this week? How's it going? Uh, I am doing well. Uh, a game that I did some graphic design on just went to Kickstarter today, and we are just about fun. We we're about 3,000 away from funding. Uh, I'm very excited. Yeah. Where is it? Put it in chat so we can back it. Uh, oh, oh uh, so it's uh, it's Capers Cyberpunk uh, and uh, from Nerdburger Games. And if you uh, if you like the, the uh, borders and the logo, I did that. That's a thing. Beautiful. Uh, I think I don't think chat likes links, which is sad. Uh, but, oh, but, it's but okay. I'll put it in our Zoom chat if you want to be able to, th if you've got it, mod access. And can yeah, it absolutely. Or, no, I haven't. I know I haven't, but um, we'll mention it at the end as well. And we'll give us a clear, Sounds good. A clear name and then we can kind of give a little bit of a promo as well. A little bit of a shout out. Uh, speaking okay. of shout outs, Tom. Wow, this, is to my, this is to my boy, Tom. I don't, well, thank I don't you. know what I'm doing. How you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost like you've done this before. <laughs> Only for a little while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a couple of years, it's fine. Um, it's I... not hot anymore. It's not hot anymore. It's actually a quite pleasant temperature. Still a little wet, but apart from that, it's quite a pleasant temperature. I am somewhat comfortable in my room temperature-wise. Wow. You know, it's, it's, it's quite good. So that's a bonus. So I'm doing well. Um, I haven't done much though. No, that's fair enough. Probably like me, just play Starfield endlessly. Yeah, I've been playing Starfield, um, which has been a lot of fun. I've enjoyed it. Um, I kind of want to try and build a kind of like Imperium starship. You know, like in forty k, you have this big cathedral. Okay, thing, gothic like ones. one of those, but like fighter, because obviously you can't go that big, but. You know, like, I mean, you can try at the back and then just go forward and then you just got gun turrets all over the place. I kind of want to do that, but then you, you need to get the skill to do all the whole like turret. You need to go down the skill. So it's a it's a process. It's a process. Um, <laughs> it's a process. Um, but all, if all else fails, someone's going to mod it. So, yeah, they <laughs> absolutely <laughs> are. 100% that's going to happen. So I can't wait to see your Imperium of Man fighter. I, I guess mean, I say I'm going to do it. I'm probably not. I'm not creative that way. I'm really not. But genuinely, the ship that I've got at the moment, I bought the shield breaker. I colored it blue and white and essentially just added compartments. So it's kind of like this wide block of awfulness with just a square big engines at the back. And that's <gasps> it. We should make a ball cube. <gasps> yes. I'm going to do that. Yes. Let's see if it lifts off at some point. I think, I mean, one of the ships there, sorry, this is Starfield chat now. We've, we've gone beyond. Um, <laughs> one of the it. ships there is genuinely, is genuinely a square. Have you seen? I can't remember what it's called, but it's essentially a square. Yeah. And you I've just build been... on top of it to make, <laughs> just, just keep adding layers to the top and build a ball cube. You'll be fine. Yeah, basically. Mm. Um, so Go, I just put yeah. my threat moment and things up there. Try cool. and segue to from that. Uh, Tim, hi. Oh, hello. This is a How segue. How's it going? Segway, good. I uh, got to go to the uh, 50th anniversary of Star Trek animated series here in Vancouver. Titmouse is operated out of Vancouver, oh, and they're the company that does Lower Decks. So I got to watch Lower Decks on a big screen, and that was really cool with a loaded theater and the animators in the balcony. We gave them a standing ovation. It was pretty cool. Beautiful. It was cool. It was really neat. So we watched some of the best episodes of, of Lower Decks, a couple of the very short Trek animated things that threw out there that you'll find online, and yeah. then the first episode of the new season. It was excellent. Phenomenal. Yeah. Love that. All right. You've actually this is week. gouging us, but uh, yeah. I won't. Well, I can't, I can't watch anything else. I'm going to have to liberate it from the internet to watch it. But. Fair. Yeah, well, that's what happens. I'm a plus <laughs> jerk. Hi. 
Well, it's nice you've had a good week. Uh, Susie, how's your week been? <laughs> Pretty good. Um, I've just been getting back to normal, really. Uh, my back yes. is pretty much there. Been back to streaming regularly. Yeah. Uh, oh, Baldur's Gate, right? Playing as Bobby. Everyone knows Bobby, right? Little goblin Bobby. Hello, Bobby. Um, started dating Carlac. Had a couple of interactions. Of you had have. me like giggle, curly hair, blush. She's pretty forward. I just want to put that one out there. Okay. I'll yeah. Keep that in mind for another had playthrough. To, had to get the fan out. I was like, whoo, Carlac. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. That was that's, that's been me really. Just. You know, kicking my feet, twirling my hair about D and D characters. That's what it's all about. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> well, uh, Starfield has engulfed my life, so that's it. I have Starfield and worked, and that is what I have done for like almost a week. I've probably not committed as, uh, as many hours as many people, but I'm in my like fifty seventh hour since Wednesday. So that's pretty respectable. It's respectable, isn't it? So. Yeah, but we're back in the Trek universe now, so I've got to move my brain away from grab jumps and back into warps and stuff. So, yeah, right, here we go. Um, we've got episode fifteen. It's just a lot of episodes, uh, and we're careering ahead with the Tilakal saga this week, and we're gonna be playing the Assessor's Gambit and Susie. Uh, Chief Burrell has the log this week, if you don't mind doing the honours for us right. whenever you are ready. Okay. <clears throat> Chief Burrell's personal log, Stardate 48942.6. I've been called to a meeting with Admiral Hebert and General Cargan for a scientific briefing. The fact that the other staff that went to C26 are here too bodes well. I suspect someone has finally figured out how to put together some of the puzzle pieces we found over the last several months and gained the courage to defy the Admiralty. I'm curious to see what the picture looks like, though I admit to a certain level of dreadful anticipation as well. All right, so uh, the four of you, uh, Anita, uh, Dr. Chella has been um, summoned up all to the first deck level one of the station where you know it's typically where ops is roughly located um but level one um houses the auditorium and so the so four of you enter that it's a great expansive room with seating all around uh, big display monitors um on the front so either um oh we had a little switch around there. Who did that? Sorry. Who did I that? Hit the, I hit the stop that? video button. That was my fault. I think two, just I think just two of you swapped. If I do that, you're back. Well, no, that's that. Now that's Tim is in the wrong place now. Hold up. <laughs> musical chairs, musical windows, full house. Bingo. No, now Tom is. <laughs> Hey why Burrell, are you all in the wrong place? why are you playing with things inside the auditorium? I thought this was out of our like space we were allowed to touch stuff. Here, have some of my bolian taco. It's really good, and I just kind of hand you like it's like it's a two hander, oh, and, it, and it's just like gooped with some sort of blue sauce. Like it does not look appetizing at all, but it smells like really good. Here, play why with this it instead, because <laughs> it's bolian. Why do you mean why is it blue? <laughs> Everything is blue. Everything is blue. They wear blue clothes. They eat blue food. Their skin is blue. I'm pretty sure it's like a like a like a like a pigment. You know when you eat, humans eat too many carrots and they they you know they can like you get a buildup of a certain mineral and your skin can change color. That can happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm sure it's the same thing with bullions. Yeah, eat too many carrots, you turn orange. Mm. Yeah. All right. You are engulfed uh, by this auditorium, um, and uh, it's practically empty, apart from towards the podium. So, so this is like echoing out. As a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, standing just by the podium are Admiral Ebert, General Cargan, uh, Doctor Talia Ferrer, the uh, scientific lead here on the station, and Captain Ackle, Klingon Captain 
of the Mopral. Um, and as you approach, complete with Bolian cuisine, the Admiral uh, greets you. Uh, officers, crew, welcome. I'm trust you didn't tell anyone you were coming. No. Burrell squints a little bit, like, no. Did we have? A very specifically not. No. Then, then no. We have been considering the difficult position that we've been placed in by the Admiralty when it comes to the investigation of the various artifacts and things that we've discovered out here in the Expanse. And that's the point where General Cargan takes over. Burrell, you came to me with a request. With the Klingons being somewhat more of a neutral party here and not uh, under the jurisdiction of Starfleet Admiralty, the Bacchus system is not off limits to us. The Bacchus system is not the location that we'll be heading to, that Captain Ackle will be taking you to. Doctor. And he motions to Dr. Talia Farrow, and she begins to, uh, on the kind of display screen behind you as well, uh, give you this briefing. So, within the last week, deep space probes have been uh, scouring the uh, expanse, as usual. And we've had probes entering the Candidate 3 system. That pulls up and it swings out and shows you uh, a planetary map indicating um, uh, how many here? Um, seven uh, planets orbiting uh, a typical G-type star. In this system, the probes found something pretty unusual. We have three M-class planets here in close proximity to each other, in addition to four other planets of varying inhabited, uninhabitable classes. And they're all getting motioned, and the um, three uh, M-class planets are roughly speaking in that Goldilocks zone that you need to sustain life. Two of the M-class planets, based on the preliminary atmospheric scans and surface samples we've been able to um, ascertain, they clearly do not originate from the Candidate 3 system. Let me say that for you again. These planets do not originate from this system. The makeup of the star... The... Oshron giggles, like, nervously, as the kind of weight of what was just said. Like, he's just kind of like, <laughs> so cool. The gravity, the other stellar bodies, uh, or the other orbital bodies that are in place around this star, it's clear that there is no natural way that these two M-class planets could have originated in this system around this star. So you're saying they got transported there somehow? Some way, somehow. We've not exactly, I've not exactly, come up with a theory of how they could possibly be in the system. But the probes uncovered something else as well. They've uncovered the same kind of mineral composition and the same kind of electromagnetic signatures and distortions as we have found around the artifacts that came aboard the station and around the obelisk that you found on Seku 6. From the early preliminary visual data we've managed to get from the probes, the candidate 3, uh, the, the M-class planet here, she pulls up the central uh, M-class planet in the system. Uh, that's kind of in the middle of the Goldilocks, uh, on the edge of the Goldilocks zone. Uh, candidate 3, the third planet here. Is completely covered in what I think are ancient ruins, matching the signatures of those obelisks. We need boots on the ground, and we need this planet surveyed. 
I think we're dealing with a single, ancient, spacefaring, advanced civilization. Enough to move planets. Where they are now, and why all we have are remnants of their technology, and they're messing with the cosmos, I don't know. Sorry, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Oshran, here, uh, sirs. Um, uh, why is Starfleet not interested in this? This seems fascinating. I don't understand. Uh, Oshran was like at a, a holiday last. Yeah. So um, uh, um, this is like right up our wheelhouse. Do we need to like talk to the Federation instead? Because I could just get the Federation Science Council out here instead of Starfleet if that's what we need. Because this seems like very science. Capital explanation mark. Oh, Sean, I feel like we know each other. And this is uh, Hebert talking now. I feel like we know each other well enough for me to not have to say this is an order. Um, but we are absolutely not speaking to the Admiralty. And all of us, by asking you all here, myself particularly, are risking their entire careers by pursuing this. So we just happen to be overhearing a conversation the Klingons are having. I understand that. I'm just curious as to why. Starfleet will not allow us to investigate these things. I don't know why. The last time that uh, we got close to anything, all of our data got confiscated. Huh. Says the person that actually volunteered all the data. <laughs> okay. Yeah, all right. One thanks. of the brass came themselves to get it. Oh, all that's what that was all about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Huh. I mean, all right, thanks. Um, that admiral um, was kind of a jerk, but what admiral isn't? And then I realize where I am as I say that, and I'm like, present company excluded, of course, of course. Oh, I Fuck. every fiber of my um, career to date training, everything is telling me that we shouldn't be doing this, but I just cannot refuse a mystery. You Ambassador, think, okay. I've asked you along to this because in some way I believe we've already made contact with this civilization. Chief, you remember when and uh, you remember when you were transported to that mm -hmm. planet somehow uh, while on the holodeck yeah. and uh, the commander from the Bellerophon? The GM can't I think remember. Was, I think it was, I think the, it was Bellerophon. the Venture. Was venture. It the venture? Was it, it's always was it the venture? venture. Yeah, one of the commanders. I think it was, I think it was like, it, it was from the Venture, that's right, because they had big enough, like, it was a big enough ship for them to, like, grab all the scientists and jump back. Yeah. Um, and the commander from the Venture. Mm hmm. And my cousin. Uh, yeah, I had to yeah. track him down with a gun. Yeah. Uh, was somehow influenced, psychically influenced. And I believe that somehow they spoke to us. And uh, something tells me you may have had a recent encounter too. Um, news travels fast around the station. Uh, Lieutenant? Rel uh, looks at Harvey. She's like, did you fucking squeal? <laughs> She's... Um... Found yourself in a little subspace pocket recently oh uh, yeah but we, i mean we it was nothing we couldn't handle i heard you had a little visitor visitor yeah yeah you you could say that yeah um well the fact that he was from lexington if the rumors are true really does start to put more puzzle pieces on the table doesn't it i'm thoroughly confused admiral yes so why it's a mystery. The fact, that, the fact he said that another Federation ship was the reason why the Lexington went MIA. That could be how far back the conspiracy goes. Uh, doc, there's, a, there's an alert on the display 
and Dr. Talia Ferrer has started to basically look like she's panicking a little bit and she's tapping away at the console of the podium. There's a wild surge of data that flashes across the screen and then static starts to cloud up the feed. Doctor, and then are you okay? And then looming, a uh, shadowy form of a Romulan de Derridix class warbird decloaks and fires on the, at the screen and then the feed cuts out completely, just leaving blank visuals. <laughs> I was trying to just giggles again. <laughs> uh, Dr. Talia Ferris, she stares at the screen and then she turns up towards the Admiral and the General and she says, um, Sirs, the the Romulans, they've they've wiped out the long-range probes. Huh. Uh, you know, this is funny when Dr. Ackle uh, gets quite kind of um, uh, hit up and explosive. Like, he's like, he's ready to, like, we'll investigate for you, General. And we will defeat these Romulans. And he's just getting really fired up and ready to go. And he's kind of clearly like on the warpath. I have to calm him down a little bit and just remind him that this, this is like a Starfleet survey mission, like in disguise, basically. Mm -hmm. I want you all out of uniform. You, uh, I'm giving you all some shore leave. And uh, I don't want to see you until you get back from shore leave. Yes, ma'am. We're going to have a lovely holiday, aren't we, crew? I know a couple good spots. Hells yeah. Ooh, so there was this one waterfall the Doc and I had found in Ryza uh, that is just, like, the most perfect. I really am playing that, like, Oshron hasn't clued in that you're talking about going on the trip, and so he's just going to start <laughs> pitching ideas of places to go. I can start taking you by the shoulders. I was like, is there anything else, Admiral? No, thank you. And the captain, uh, Captain Ackle, um, they literally feed you. <laughs> kind of, kind of joins you as you walk out, and he slaps Harvey on the back and says, "I hope you like gah." I've um, I've never really tried it. <laughs> Does that like laugh down the corridor as it fades out? To, yeah. To a new um, little scene. Um, is there anything you guys will need to do or want to do before you leave? Um, and I think the like if there's any shot of Burrell, she's like packing up her like to go bag, which is mostly consisted of weapons. So yeah. she's just doing like the reverse of you know when you take a weapon off and they keep finding weapons, she just keeps finding weapons and putting them in a bag <laughs> ready to go. Just a bag of knives. I think there's like a, a little chime at Burrell's door if this is in uh, her quarters. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And Akka uh, will be on the other side. Come in. Um, going on a trip? Oh, this? <laughs> She's holding up like a a, a mechleth. Oh, that's just I just have it lying around. She puts it on the side. Um, what can I do you for? Um, well, I was hoping it was more about what I could do for you. Uh, I recently menu came item? to. Uh, well, I recently came into possession of something that might interest you. Okay. Let's sit down. Uh, and Eck is just going to put a, a pad down on the table. Mm -hmm. uh, a mutual friend of ours was hired to create something that you might be familiar with uh, out of a certain Ryzen herb. And Burrell's going to look at the pad and it's sort of like it's going to take a minute for it to click. Okay. I would look at that thumbprint if I were you. And so she looks... The person who signed off on the project. She takes uh, a and it is... Someone wanted you dead. Got it from the source. She takes I that mechleth, blood feuds her, throws it into the wall. And because for some reason Good in Star Trek, all have I have a nice stable reaction. <laughs> can I walk in just as that's happening? Hey, beef! <laughs> yeah. Uh, bad time. Could you just give me five minutes, please, Ashran? 
<laughs> I literally just back right out, like full on Homer Simpson, let the door close in front of me. So you mean to tell me, Eka, that Ambassador Yang herself ordered a custom made poison to kill me and me alone? Uh, well, not necessarily you alone. Uh, everyone in your bloodline that has certain genetic markers is a target. Okay. Holy shit! Klingons don't have a round. Blood feuds, it's all or nothing, baby. Do you know if more of this has been made? If she's just tried to take As... me or if she's gone for my family too? As far as I'm aware from my source, uh, he was the only supplier. Right. And she's pacing. She's like a caged, like, tiger. And you can see, like, her fists are clenching and unclenching. She's starting to get that little shade darker as she's getting angrier. Anything else? See? Have you heard anything else? Any other attempts since? I mean, she's tried to come for my job. She got me suspended. She failed one attempt. So far, I haven't heard anything through the grapevine. Um, actually, that's a good question. I can, I can, I can give you some threat to ask some questions about that. You can, GM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, through my well-informed talent. Um, do I, my first question is, do I know if more of this has been made, more of this toxin has been made? Uh, yes, you do. Uh, there hasn't been any more. There hasn't been any more, and my guy's the only supplier. And I currently have them under a little bit of a protection... They're, they're safe for now, which means you're safe for now. But this is a good thing. Yang doesn't know you have this. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, if you wanted to go for her job like she came for yours, it's decent evidence enough to make an allegation. It's facts to back it. But you gotta know who you can trust with the information. I think at I'm this just point the... we're a little past that, a little past going for a job. Well, I mean, it's a matter of honor being satisfied, right? Mm-hmm. Poison, coward's weapon. She spits on the ground. Thank you, Aka. Well, you're welcome. Do Just they know that you're involved? No. I like to keep my nose clean about these things. And Eka, there is a chime at your personal coordinate, um, communicator. Just one sec. Hello? Uh, boss. You may need to come down to the place. We have a problem? We might. All right. I'll be there in a little bit. I don't need to tell you to play it smart. Mm -hmm. Don't rush headlong into something you're going to regret. Burrell just nods. You can tell she's clearly like, the cogs are whirling, the little hamster's going over time in her head. <laughs> and she extends a hand out to you. I owe you a great deal. Uh, I'll do the, the clasp. Yeah, yeah. The, the arm clasp. Yeah, it makes a strong firm one too, like a good jiggle to like it. Like a good, good, a good like firm, uh, like shoulder. Sorry, sorry. sorry. It's okay. I'm just a little less hardy. Um, I might call it in one day. Knowing me, I might not, but 
Keep yourself safe. You too. If you need any help down at the uh, the bar, let me know. Will do. And uh, Echo will head out. All right. So back. Okay, you can go in, Oshron. <laughs> right, so I full on check for like bat less. We're good. We're good. <laughs> All right, so back down at the Galleria, you uh, have headed uh, in uh, towards uh, Eka's place. Before you manage to actually um, head in through the front door, uh, you can hear already, um, it's not like tables are being overturned, but there's definitely kind of a bit of a ruckus, or like something going on, things are being moved around, you can hear the clinking of glasses, um, people are a little bit annoyed. There is Starfleet security forming a perimeter at your establishment and then is... walking towards you is uh, Com uh lieutenant commander sar Develli. and um, lieutenant uh, commander Develli is the co-chief of security on the starfleet side of the station she is a zack dawn officer she is incred highly intelligent incredibly tactical um, she knows, and you will know too, uh, all the best uh, dom jock games on the station, legal or illegal. Um, mm -hmm. uh, she really does make it her business to know um, all about the station as much as she can. And she heads over to you with a little bit of a smug smile on her face as she says, Well, 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 just the person I wanted to see. And she hands you a pad and she says, we're searching your establishment. Searching my establishment? And you're coming with us. All right. Allowing the supply and the possible assistance of supply of Therogen aboard this station is at minimum enough to get your li business license revoked. And at most, 10 to 15 years on a Federation penal colony. I'd like to see you try and prove it. As soon as we find the two Orions skulking around your establishment somewhere, I'm sure we will be able to extract that information. Mm. I hire a lot of Orions, so I'm not quite sure what you mean. And that's also kind of racist? Why don't you come with us? <laughs> and she's flanked by, like, you know, two burly security guys. I'm, uh... I'll head out with them, and I'll also make sure to contact my legal counsel, which is Oshron, who is probably leaving the station. <laughs> I'm your legal counsel? You're of course. Bad. You're so hooped. At the very least, you know Federation law. Oh, okay. <laughs> the most non-lawyer person that you know. Is your... <laughs> wow, that's... That's not going to be a problem for you at all. Eh, probably not. We'll figure no. it out. <laughs> It'll be fine. Uh, uh, yeah, I would. I would kind of like literally be probably stepping onto the onto the. Oh, we don't have. Do we have our? We don't have our com badges. No, you're it goes unanswered. Uh, all right. I you get I'm a message. To... Thank you for calling Oshron. Please leave a message after the beep. And then it's like the like the hail chime to the door. Alrighty. Uh, yeah. So. All right. I guess I'll have to call on Gilo, who yeah. was my lawyer symbiont. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll cut it there. Nice. Um, cool. And so um, the four of you. Dr. Chella, obviously, at this point, steps aboard the Mopral. Uh, it's one of the, it's the smaller of the birds of prey. Um, and you kind of step through into, based on your time on the station now, f the familiarity of kind of Klingon uh, deck plating, architecture, stuff like that, control panels and such. 
um, but particularly for like Harvey, um, perhaps for Dr. Chella, it's kind of the smell actually that is like the most different. There's kind of a there's kind of a mustiness, a very Klingon kind of smell in here. Um, and Burrell, you're whisked away to home uh, in you know probably some like teenage memories. Um, it's like, uh, I, I guess, like, you know, boys uh, pee teenage locker room, but like amped up. Um, so yeah. Sounds like her brother's rooms exactly. when she was growing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and the Klingon crew kind of eye you all up and down. Even you, Burrell, they kind of, some of them have this really kind of scathing look about them. Um, but the first officer comes and greets you. His name is not important. I will not be naming him. Um, <laughs> uh, and he greets you, invites you to your quarters. Um, but you have effectively the run of the um, ship. Uh, although it's recommended that you come to the bridge and your quarters and perhaps the mess hall if you are hungry. Understood. We are, while we are responsible for our crew and their actions, please do not take any unnecessary risks. You hear that, Harvey? What, what does that entail? What, what's an unnecessary risk? And he just shoots you a look, Joel. Burrell, and then just kind of leaves. <laughs> <laughs> She's dying laughing. Listen, don't get in people's way don't question what they're doing don't try and correct them don't uh don't steal don't steal anything from their plates um i do any of those things anyway what what well I, you, so here's the thing right Stop they're gonna it. do them to you and yes. you have to suck it up yes it's gonna be great Arby. Yeah. we're gonna be oh we're gonna have so much fun you're probably gonna get punched at some point, so you just gotta learn how to take a punch. You can take a punch, right, Harvey? Um, I haven't been punched since I was. Do a you want to practice? Teenage. No, no. Okay. I, I, I don't. And listen, right? I know Starfleet. You're here to be helpful. You're here for the betterment of everyone. Don't. Don't what? You don't, just hear don't the don't cloaking sound. You just hear the cloaking sound. I'm full on just Such like, cool oh, we just cloaked. That's so cool. It's Guys, such a good sound. I want to ship the cloaks. Um, oh, yeah. That's just a thing, right? So do you want let's me to, to what? Bridge. Stay in my quarters the entire journey? No, let's go to the bridge. To let's go look. Let's go look around. Come on, Harvey. Let's I go mean, look around. I would love to look at the engines. It's, I've never seen a Klingon ship's engine. Let's go. Before. I grab Harvey and I just kind of drag him out the room. Okay. I say to the doctor, I'm like, I, do you want to start a betting pool? What are we betting on? <laughs> Within the next 12 hours, one of them, at least one of them, is going to get punched. My Probably all run. run. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need, I need, I want some skill, I want some skill checks. We're going to find this out. If there's going to be money on the table, we're going to find this out. Right, Tom and Tim, I need you to roll for me, please, a presence and con. No, no, presence and command. Presence and command test. <laughs> oh, I'm getting punched. Difficulty <laughs> three for each okay, of getting you. getting punched. I'm um, telling I've you got now. my Ushan tour uh, on me. Um, I made sure I brought it. So, and Ushan, uh, I'm I'm enough of a Trek nerd that I know Andorian lore. Ushans are like the uh, they're the Andorian equivalent of a Macleth, basically. So, like they're all about uh, uh, the kind of tradition and honor of of Andorian ice miners, and they're like a mix between a tool and a weapon. And so, I made sure that I brought mine with me so that I didn't like so that i fit as best the role as i could uh so can i add that in as like a trait uh or use my andorian trait in okay. this case as yeah. as a focus 100 percent. well as a as a as a trait so the difficulty for you as is gonna trait. be two the difficulty for oh, okay Tom cool is that's be how three. that works awesome yeah great do you guys want to add any dice 
or spend any determination at this point or already. Dice. You want to add three dice? <laughs> you said that just five? Did you say All five five dice? Dice? I want to give you so much threat. That... Okay. <laughs> you no, want to roll five no, dice? No, no, no. <laughs> look, look, I want to break the threat pool. <laughs> I want, I want to, what is the cap of this threat pool here? <laughs> uh, I mean, Go on, do sure, it. I'll, I'll do a die. Uh, you know what? A die? Let's go two dice. Do Let's five. go two dice. Roll all five. I, I, how many? Th how much threat do I, I would give? I would get six threat five? if you did that. Six threat. Yeah, going up against Romulans. No, oh, you'll be fine. <laughs> You're right. We'll be fine. I want all five. Don't cool. listen to her. She's full of Are you of doing lies. it? Did you actually do it? Are you doing it? <laughs> all right. Hell yeah. I'm so doing 14 this. Threat. All right. Tim. Didn't you listen right. to her? Need... She was very convincing. Do you need to add any dice? I I don't think I do. I think I'm okay. good I with my can do. two. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. So we yeah. need to pick my lowest stat for you. You hit it. Well done. Yeah, I got my two. Tom, difficulty three. That's four. You got a point of momentum. See, I got us some momentum, guys. Come on, I got, yeah, got us some did. momentum. Right. Yeah, By did. the time that you all join up at the bridge, neither of them have any injuries. Oh no! May I? May I? May I? Uh, double down on this one. Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. So. <laughs> I have one, uh, uh, but I have like the honor factor, or even better, Harvey has the honor factor. Like Harvey took a hit, but everyone like didn't take a hit to wound permanently. Took a hit, and everyone's like kind of like uh, Nog in Deep Six Nine when he stood up to Martok. Like <laughs> Harvey now has the respect of the crew. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. I'll let you spend the momentum to do that. All right, there we go. If, if you want, it's your momentum, Harvey. I don't want to tell you you have to do that. No, I really don't care if the crew respect me or not. I'd rather the momentum. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you can, okay, you can keep it. Fuck this crew, mate. Fuck <laughs> to hell with them. All right. All right you know, if right, they're not right. going to like Harvey for who he is, Sodom. Oh, wow. Sorry. They'd probably Isn't like Harvey that... for who he is because of that reason, actually. Yeah, <laughs> strangely. Um... But you get a little look at the engine room. You get a look at the, yeah. look at the cloaking device. I mean, it's good fun. Yeah, I'll have a look at the. Cloaking you have a nice device, time. Although I can't. You know. Yeah, and so by the time that the four of you meet up to go to the bridge, no one has any injuries. Corral looks disappointed. Both lost. I literally just walked by. How much you lose? <laughs> With a like sly smile. I on mean, my face. at this point, it's still early. It's true. I'll tell you what. It is true. Harvey's going to go double, double or nothing. To someone else by the end. Doc yeah, double or nothing. Harvey's going to go up to Doctor Cheddar and just like gush over all the engines, <laughs> the cloaking device that he's seen, <laughs> and like kind of like have you? Is, do they? Do Klingon ships have medical bays? I don't know. Uh, Klingon medicine is a little bit different from a lot of the Federation standards of care. It's mostly like. Uh, spit on it and walk it off kind of deal oh so it's like a chief kind the chief's kind of medicine uh yeah um it's 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 about getting soldiers back on the battlefield less about you know um continuance of care and making sure people are at their oh. best oh remind me not to get injured i mean i'm here so oh, you're yeah yeah that. that's true that's fine yeah okay i can get shot wait no um, uh, I'd prefer it if you didn't. Yeah, I, I'd yeah, rather yeah. not have to yeah. patch any wounds, but I can. Okay, okay. That, 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 I feel better now. I feel better. <laughs> All right, those chunky uh, uh, bridge doors open. Uh, go on, finish off. I was just going to say, listen, as far as first dates go, uh, this isn't really what I expected, but I'm happy you're here. Oh, well, you know. This could be like the mini first date before the first date. True. I mean, is this technically our second date? Because there was the first one that was an accident, and then the I misread on, completely. We could be on. We'll we'll just say it's the second date. Okay. Yeah. Second date. You're always taking me on vacation. And then I watch the doors open. Uh, and before you uh, is the you know. Uh, beeping 
busy bridge of the bird of prey um they've very much gone for that like red lighting everything's low down because you have to know that we're cloaked uh on the on the show has to you have to get that across visually um so everything's quite dim and the viewport um has the kind of stars going past and then uh finally i gotta play my sound effects because i love my own sound effects uh do you know do you know uh, can i can i share like a, a trek nerd nerd thing that i just love mm-hmm. is when a romulan ship cloaks uh, we've seen the bridge and it never dims so it truly is just a klingon thing they do just it's a klingon it. and federation thing so it's like the romulans are like they don't need to do this let's it's, i feel like the romulans face. already have a lot of dim lighting going on <laughs> okay <laughs> but that, so that's an light, interesting so, continuity yeah. error because the defiance cloaking device is a romulan cloaking device <gasps> yeah I think that's on purpose. I think that's the whole point. That's it. Like, I think that's that a, the Romulans are just that confident. I, that's my vibe for it, anyways. That's, that's how I interpret interesting. it. That's interesting. That's risky, Or it's just a mistake is. that just ends up I'm reading way too much into it, like a proper Star Trek nerd should. But <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying, you know, I think well, it's like, always cool. What we can surmise is that the lighting is not linked to the cloaking device. It's an optional <laughs> extra. God, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love yeah. this tangent that we're on. It's incredible. Yeah, I'm just full on, like, talking about like, This is probably what Harvey's no in a monologue is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the lights have I been. stubbed my foot. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> you stubbed your toe. Or else, like, give me an airlock, please. <laughs> what the, just like, doing, like, the, like, you're, medical like you're in order. church. It's like just that. Uh. One of, like, one of the officers behind a console <laughs> looks at you, bro, and says, I could oblige. <laughs> please. She laughs and slaps yeah, him on the shoulder. She, yeah, she laughs back. Um, but then the the chair turns. I don't remember if they have swivelly chairs. I don't give a shit. It's my it's my. They bridge. do now. Um, Drama. They do yeah. Now. And there's the swivelly chair. Captain Ackle turns it around and then gets up from it and says, "Welcome to the bridge. Welcome to the Mapra. I hope you found the quarters to your liking." Actually, really comfortable. Reminds me of home. Yeah, it's got a bed. It's got a bunk. It has Harvey and it has nothing. It's like metal. Yeah, and it, nothing that's else. why I imagined just a yeah, bunk. Yeah, it is, yeah, <laughs> literally. Excellent. We will be entering the system shortly. Uh, any commands to that? I can't remember the fucking names of the different ranks or the, you know flight controller. Um, give us the uh, give us a visual, and up on the screen you see um, a kind of display of the ca- uh, the candidate system. And then finally, it um, drops out of warp on the edge of the system. Um, and Captain Ackle orders um, for the crew to kind of uh, take a scouting sweep of the system, um, kind of scan for any kind of anomalous readings. Um, the helm cries out uh, Gravimetric distortions and uh, uh, unknown energy waves uh, emitting from. Uh, one of the planets, Captain, we're compensating and there's a bit of turbulence and you have to do a little bit of a left, a little bit of a right, yeah, yeah, and then, um, so there is a, a little bit of that. Uh, finally, um, the ship, um, starts to impulse towards, uh, one of the, or the kind of three, um, I kept the Candidate 3 planet, which is the planet that was focused on in the analysis by Dr. Talia Ferrer. Can Harvey go up to the chief and go, do you remember that one of these planets kind of took down a shuttle, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, good. And I'm yeah, sorry, yes. what? <laughs> so the captain's you like, mean it took down a shuttle. Keep, keep your distance just within transporter range. It took down a shuttle and we're beaming down? Well, the last time we were on a planet with these structures, um, it caused a uh, shuttle and um, so is it a runabout or a shuttle? Uh, it was a runabout. You went, you went down the runabout. runabout. It was the Zambezi. Yeah, it's the runabout. It's Zambezi, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Put down a runabout and a Romulan scout. They they have a, a history of uh, interfering with ship electronic systems, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah. So Engineering, just keep that in mind. Uh, 
Uh, and so Tactical is like, no sign of the Romulans, Captain. Uh, and the Captain orders uh, the Maprol to, yeah, just go into a very, very, very high orbit, just kind of keeping a good distance on the planet. Um, uh, the uh, Science Station, uh, just towards the back, I think, if I remember vaguely right, uh, of the Bird of Prey Bridge. Um, so just behind you guys, in effect, as you're kind of uh, stood at kind of roughly, like, guest positions, I guess. Um, they say, Captain, reading electromagnetic and gravimetric disturbances emanating from the planet. And there seem to be uh, tetrion particles present, too. Um, and uh, you can see on the viewer this huge M-class planet, probably twice the size of Earth uh, down below you. That's the Candidate 3 uh, planet. Um, even from the visual here, even from the orbit, you can see like some of the like architecture, I guess, uh, like huge cities with these huge skyscrapers. So these little just these these little specks and like little veins and and kind of urban areas that dot every bit of the kind of continental um, parts of the planet. And there are no life forms down there. Uh, so yeah, the they scan for um, they scan for life forms. Oh, let's do a little roll with their ship. Why not? Yeah, let's with their see how crew good the and their ship, because that is actually a thing. Let's see if they can find any life forms. That's the things. That's the ship. A bird of prey. Oh my god! I just realised that Burrell, There's a Burrell class bird of prey. That's what you're on. Yeah, I named yeah. her, and then I forgot that that was the name. No, of a I type love of it. Ship. Like, I just like <laughs> Burrell. It's just like a, you know, the, it's like Ford or something, right? It's got to be yeah. someone's yeah. name at some point, right? <laughs> Yeah. From a warrior culture, of course they're going to name their children after starships and yeah. weapons and stuff. Of course they are. Yeah. Um, okay, oh, okay. Could you imagine a human in constitution? Know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, constitution. What's your name, Voyager? <laughs> <laughs> well, so this is going to be senses and science. Uh, do you want to give their crew any extra dice with your momentum? No. How, how much do you want to know if there are life forms on the planet or not? Yeah, it's a passing fancy, Harvey. Tom's got Cavalier tonight. All right. Yeah. You know, Harvey's on a second date ship. and he's like, it's this Clingon ship, baby. If there are baby. life forms, let's just, <sighs> let's just deal with the Romulans and it get home in time died. for dinner. He's yeah. on a date, okay? He's playing it <laughs> all cool. All right, all right. Fine, let's find I'm out. I'm gonna scan it. I'm not even gonna look. Uh, look this, how cool the, I am, the, baby. All the distortions difficulty is gonna be three. Oh, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it's all right. The no, no complications. It's just the funny oh, dice right. roller. Remember, it's just the dice roller being weird. Oh yeah. yes, yes, yes. Uh, one success means that. Um, so the the sensors or the um, sciences uh, station uh, scans the planet. Uh. It's hard to break through the uh, electromagnetic disturbances, Captain. Uh, not getting any qualified uh, life signs. And uh, so the Captain turns around to the U4 and says, Another dead planet, then. Maybe. Have you detected any Romulans in the area? We lost our probes to Romulans. Yes, I was there. When we saw it on the screen. Um, nothing. Tactical. Keep a watchful eye on the system. So, you will beam down, yes? I mean, I guess that's why we're here. Um, are any other Klingon, like, coming down with us? I will have Is a team just... of Bex with you. My okay. first officer will accompany you. Um, look at the first officer. I'm gonna have to name this fucking first officer now, aren't I? Yeah, you are. He's coming on the away mission. Yeah, yeah. My mouth, you did my this mouth to yourself. Like that. I did do hey, this to you, myself. Chat, give me a Klingon name. Not something dumb. Um, he needs to you sound can just do... <laughs> valiant. You, you could do something what Tom valiant. did on Saturday and just avoid names at all. 
You were hyped for me on Saturday, Sam, and I just wasn't having any of it. I know. <laughs> I tried real hard. I uh, like The what was? Krusk. 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 Ooh, All right. That's a good name. Well, it's like it's gonna be like Commander Krusk, right? Oh yes. It's like a Klingon it's cereal. Really for a good mouth Klingon field. NPC, don't you just have to come up with like orc names? Like it kind yeah. of is like that, isn't it? Yeah. Like they're like. You said Krusk, right? I'm gonna write it in the in the chat so that I remember it's Krusk. Okay, Krusk. Yes. Cool. Commander Krusk uh, accompanies you down onto the planet, and so you head to the transporter room and you beam down. Nice. Also, oh. you need to share your soundboard so I can do this too. <laughs> it's Trek Core. Just go to just go to trekcore dot like dot com or something. They've got a library sweet. of sound effects. All right, sweet. Uh, what am I gonna play on this? No, it's not a calm planet. It's not a harsh planet. Uh, it's a really nice planet with nothing bad on it. Yeah, basically, it's like it's a riser nice. but better. Ooh. Okay. Riser. Sorry, Father sorry, Noah. sorry. Sorry. I, mean. I was I was waiting for that. That's Susie. You're welcome. Okay. All around you um, is a uh, ruined city. Let me grab, which I didn't do before we started, like a dummy, um, the book so I can read out the actual descriptions to you. That would be good. Um, Tim, it's over to you to vamp for 30 seconds. Go. I, I, I'm a little teapot, Jordan. No, I don't know. Um, it's like... <laughs> we just we just beam down, right? You can you can be on the way to the transporter room. It's right, Connor, it's like... I'll, um... Oh, I was I'll good pull having us beam Ashram. down. Um, yeah. hey, Ashram? Were you, What's uh... Up? Hey, B. Were you listening? Are you listening earlier to Harvey and, uh... Shala? No, why? What's up? She she pulls him aside. She's like, shh, shh. What, what, what? They're on a date. <laughs> Wait, this is a date? I full on, like, just volume back up. Like, this. This is the date. This? <laughs> she's this like, shh. Yeah, apparently. They were, like, <laughs> they were, like, Nerds. talking. They didn't realize that, like, a Klingon engine room is very, like, quieter than you would think. So oh, I know. I was there, down like, there. It was like, yeah. it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, they're whispering to each other. I'm like, oh, this is our first day. This is our second day. Oh, well, that's what that was. Yeah. It's cute, kind of. It is kind of cute. All yeah. right. You beam down. She's going she's gonna to break them. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, that, no, that's, that's what happens that's as we like. Thing. She's going to break them. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> all right. And all around you. Uh, are the ruins of crumbled buildings and damaged spires that are visible in all directions, as are piles of stone, rubble, and assorted ancient detritus. One common element visible in all the walls, spires, and the ground slabs around you are the grooves cut into the stone in either straight lines or precise angles. Glyphs of unknown language are carved within the walls and spires as well, similar to the glyphs that you found on the other ancient artifacts that you've seen in recent months. <clears throat> A light wind kicks up whirls of dust here and there. The entire area is blanketed in a strange silence of a long abandoned city. There are no animal noises and no apparent sounds of machinery aside from the gentle chirping from your tricorders. Um, you also, not so much I'd say for Burrell, and I'm not 100% sure on rise in physiology, but you all anyway get a sense of the um, literal gravity of the planet because you're on a much larger um, mass in terms of a class M planet, everything is weightier, and so you feel it was twice as heavy almost as you would normally. So, any of your kind of physical tests and stuff for this, for the rest of this on the surface, is going to be increased difficulty by one. It's just this that is bit harder to 
be athletics, jump around, all that kind of stuff. I think Klingons are probably gonna you're probably gonna be a little bit more like you yeah. know, able to perform athletically here, but the others Borel's pumped because this is one for home because I don't think y'all are gonna get at least Sam. Um, it's gonna be like Goku coming out of the freaking hyperbolic time chamber. I'm gonna be like, ready to go by the end. I fucking I understood all training. the words in that sentence. I there got, were I words in that sentence. I kind of got it. I kind of got it. Got the gist. Got the gist. <laughs> uh, all right. Your initial scans of the area show this to be a dead city, um, but um, particularly for um, the three of you that were on Setu Six, and if you've seen any of the artifacts, all of these like um, grooves cut into the stone um, match exactly what you've expected from the artifacts before and from the obelisk before they've got like inset into them they've got those kind of like strips um dead at the moment no power running through them or anything like that but those are the strips that you've seen that kind of like little blue electromagnetic energy running through may i do it i guess a control and science on my tricorder to try and like yeah. So, like, where do we go next kind of thing? Like, Absolutely, yeah. Um, okay. Reason and science, difficulty two. So can I... I'm not really, like, doing any research. I'm using my actual, com like, machine. That's why I was thinking control. Sure. Would that be okay? Yeah. Um... Perfect. Boom. That's exactly what you needed. Difficulty two. You managed to cut through some of the interference from uh, some of the Tetrion readings that you do get a little bit of. So you've got to watch out for some radiation in, around here a little bit, maybe. Um, but you do detect that a structure farther to the northeast from your position is emitting a power signature. It's the only right. one that seems to be around for... Hey B, I think we got a uh, power signature up, but the like that away. I kind of point right. to my tricorder. I point with my tricorder, like <laughs> that way, but don't really show. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, Let's go. It's the biggest go. lead we've got. All right. Um, along that path, you start to see and detect with your tricorders those like occasional little bursts of energy rippling like veins uh through um those um carvings and those are all kind of like thin slim panels in the floor and in some of the walls and some of the structures that you see they all even visually even without kind of really analyzing them with like a tricorder they all seem to actually be heading in the same direction that you are heading towards this possible power signature And so you finally arrive at the structure <clears throat> a good few walk away and after quite a bit of Klingon um, <clears throat> complaint that they haven't actually met any foes yet and this is actually quite boring um, you finally come up to um, that larger structure um, there seem to, seems to be here a, like a kind of pentagonal doorway where uh, the doors, the slab, whatever it is in front of here, is closed. There doesn't seem to be any kind of obvious access port. There are these strips and these little kind of like um, like bluish kind of veins, obviously carved into the, uh, the stone. Um, but there doesn't seem to be any obvious way to open the door. What would you like to do? Mm. Harvey, how um, did you interface with this last time? When we had the inter uh, artifact, oh, you interfaced with it. I, um... Well, uh, uh, to deactivate it, I shot a phaser at it. Um, there were... Were there crystals or something? It was really uh, complicated. But I think it was a crystal kind of panel or something like that. So, uh, yeah, in, in, in these um, very clean-cut uh, like strips uh, that tend to go th quite thin but then at different a very very clear clean mm. angles 
all these they're carved into the stone themselves inside of them there does seem to be some kind of like responsive um it's a bit like the screen of a pad or um maybe like an isolinear chip type mm-hmm. effect maybe it's a polymer maybe it's something else maybe it's another exotic material but there does seem to be something in there it's not quite maybe crystal maybe it's crystal like yeah yeah but yeah. it's not like jaggedy or anything yeah. like that it's just like a, a very clean panel but there are there are like panels inside of these and this is what's lighting up and like emitting these little blue streaks that are heading towards the um I, this this building if i could have a look um, I didn't really have much time to investigate the last one because the Romulan shooting us, and well, we have to stop the pulsing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I thought that was the quickest. But um, give me a little bit of time, and um, I'll see what yeah. I can come up with. And she passed you on the back. She says, "This time we've only got board Klingons to deal with, so you've got maybe ten minutes more than last time." Right. Um. Okay. I'll try and speed up. Okay. He gets the, yeah, I can help uh, you out with that if you want. Oh, thank you. Thank you. We worked on it together the first time, so let's... We uh, did, yeah. Yeah. And we start working on the um, panel. Like, using the tricorders and trying to figure out what does what. Um, and all that. Can I totally not get the hint and try and assist? You will. Yeah. And I will be wrangling the the board Klingon backs uh, to see, you know, if we can be finding a physical override, something that they can, you know, put their weight behind. A mm. physical override is just a jagged piece of metal you can jam in the door. <laughs> yep, <laughs> it'll tire them out a bit, you know. Yeah, just just five backs all just pushing a door as hard as <laughs> yeah. they can. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're literally complaining, as literally written in here, are like broken stone walls and blowing rocks. <laughs> Give me something I can fight! Yeah. Um, um, uh, what do you want from a, an aid for this? Um, so... Uh, I would say <laughs> that the... Presence and engineering? Oh no, not that one, that one. <laughs> you could try that. You could try yeah, that. I'd like to. Okay. So stupid. Um, uh, I'd like to assist with insight and science if I could. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And Harvey, what's your main what's your main approach? Uh, my approach is trying to logically um, so he's thinking that these energy pulses are energy that powers certain things. Yeah. So he's looking at possible way to I think ideally we're just after kind of like um, getting the doors open, right? So he's yeah. gonna try and figure out a way to uh, put energy towards the doors who activate a console to open it up. So I think logic and you could either go science. It's up to you whether you want to do it through science because it's something new or engineering. It's, it's, I mean, it's your thought. I think, you know, like your engineering uh, yeah. applies here. So I would say reasoning and Reasoning and engineering. Yeah, no problem. Defoy um, is going to be three overall. Three. You've got two assists there. As long as you can get so one success, you turn okay. right. Would you say that electroplasmus EPS systems, are they, is this similar to an EPS system? It's a direction of energy, you know? That's what he's kind of yes. putting in it? Or is that... It is very alien, though. Let's apply it. Okay. Um, okay. Let's say that, like, that is the connection you make, actually. Yes. Yes, that's that's kind of the way he, Logically. he would look at it. Right. There we go. All right, successes. with four successes in total, gives you another point of momentum. And uh, let me just update this here as well. Um, I think what you managed to do is, as one of the like streams of energy, you're kind of timing it with your tricorder, right? Um, as one of the streams of energy, and Oshron's coordinating a little bit. Um, you manage to kind of like almost like like jump starting a car like you jump start the door a little bit just enough for it to like nudge slightly and then the Klingons and the Klingon team you have with you like push open that door and as you look through as you head kind of through just to look around the door look into it what it actually opens up into is kind of a like what would be like kind of a huge 
maybe a public gardens in its time, or that's kind of what it reminds you of. And what you've actually come through is a, maybe a, a large, like, um, uh, wall, or um, it's giving maybe some kind of, like, Acropolis vibes, like, that it, you know, that it's like you've gone through this kind of city, maybe old city wall, or something like that, and you've come through into what could have been these, this beautiful, beautiful place. About... 300 meters or so in towards the center of this uh, place that you've managed to enter you see the shape of a massive um, I'm going to say hipper style maybe it's hyper style hall um, and Susie will know this once I've finally described it um, very kind of like um, Egyptian university academy thing so it is in ruins, so you don't quite get to appreciate the full structure of it. But ahead of you, this building is effectively made of these pillars, of these obelisks that you found on Setu 6. Every single one of them, a good 20 meters high and supporting still parts of a roof that is crackling and glowing with blue electromagnetic energy. Finally, on your tricorders, you do manage to detect some life signs. And just off in the distance, um, I'd say probably Burrell maybe as you might, might start to kind of take the lead for the group. As you approach the hall, you catch the sight of a Romulan landing party. Speaking to a tall, unknown alien. It appears that the leader of the Romulan party is talking with a bipedal alien that is nearly three meters in height, has a light green or bluish skin, with wide lidless eyes, a pug nose, and arms and legs that are disproportionately longer than would really kind of fit their frame. Um, they're wearing a robe and they seem to be hovering rather than like standing or walking. The alien's fingers uh, are quintuple jointed and move in a kind of flowing, almost hypnotic pattern as it speaks to the Romulan subcommander, you assume. And then as you kind of see that scene off in the distance, you hear in your mind, all of you, welcome, I am Ambassador, uh, Assessor Tredic. I do not expect additional visitors. May you be more congenial than these people. First of all, out of character, that's my new sleep paralysis demon. Oh, the vibes are off with that. Ooh, <laughs> alien. Um, but Burrell, obviously armed to the teeth. Um, she's going to be like, no, no, no. She's going to urge that everyone stay ready but not be outwardly hostile. <laughs> I kind of give you like a look, a like gesture towards your weapons, and then kind of step in front. <laughs> yeah, you should probably take the lead in this one. <laughs> uh, I am, I am Oshron. Uh, I'm from, I'm from another part of the quadrant called the Federation. An alliance of planets and peoples that work together for benefit of all. So physically in the kind of space in the scene and stuff, what's your intention there? Are you going up to the group, the whole group and speaking? Or are you just kind of like mm. speaking out loud, hopefully that the voice that you heard will respond or? Yeah, I mean, like they, they spoke to us, right? So I'm kind of like taking a step forward and speaking back as I step forward. So I'll walk towards them slowly and kind of, I, I want to basically present like uh, as if I were a, a minor noble in a court vibe rather than uh, like, uh, you know, like demanding an audience. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So how far are you away from the group or are you just approaching the Romulans as well? well we heard, them, all, no ma we heard them no problem, right? Yeah, you heard the voice hit, like, presumably their voice, no problem. Like, it was all, yeah, so basically, you, you heard it, like, as weird as it sounds, I guess, like, in your brain. You know how, like, first position sounds like on a microphone when yeah. you're listening to a podcast? It was, like, just, eh. 
Yeah, uh, so I'll take a... Like, I don't think I'd stay any more than... I wouldn't get more than, like, a meter or two away from the rest of my group. Okay, great. So if they stopped moving, then I would stop moving. But I would speak like I was right in front of them. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. So, sorry, just... So you introduced yourself, effectively. Yep. Okay. Yeah, without... Without making it like I'm representing the Federation, I just want to be like, I'm from it. Yeah. I'm playing that whole, like, this is not an official line thing very seriously at this mm -hmm. moment. I have not heard of your Federation. These are uh, Romulan. They are. They are not of our Federation. We're... Neighbors? You said that with some distaste. We stay out of each other's backyards for the most part, and it seems to do the galaxy well that we do so. You are enemies. No, but we're not friends. You lie. I do not. Mm, yes, perhaps it is more complicated than that. Everything is. Nothing is black and white. Green or red. Blue and yellow. There are no sides. There is only the Correct. true way of the Dilagal. The what, sorry? Is why that you? you? Why are you here? Partly to see what they're up to, and I point to the Romulans, and partly to see why you exist here in the first place. I devote my We've life to protecting these places. the Tilakal. Oh. Sorry, say that again. I, I devote my life to protecting the Tilakal. I devote my life to the Federation. Then why are you here? Because part of being in the Federation means partly investigating things we don't understand to learn more about ourselves and the others around us. You classify as one of those things we don't understand and do not know. Therefore, we'd like to. I'm afraid not. I will protect the secrets that are entrusted to me at all costs. And without... Like, you get the sense that it, it's... Like, he, you don't see him make any motions or anything like that. But suddenly, every single one of the Romulans in that landing party, like, at once, all turn to look directly at you guys. And then scatter as um, the assessor floats away. Actually, you know what? No. He kind of makes some gestures with his, like, hands, and there's kind of some, like, cr that crackling kind of electromagnetic energy. And that kind of flare, almost like a kind of warp um, crack, the, the warp thing, um, out mm -hmm. he flashes out of existence. I kind of look back. Did he just cue? He kind of did. Um... But so weirdly, like, Harvey reminds you of the getting lost in that displacement, that subspace displacement. And Burrell, so it's the same, like, look to it. It's that same kind of, like, folding and, like, crack so in he, subspace. So they can willingly go between the two, go into yeah. its own subspace kind of bubble, I guess you could say. Maybe um, I shouldn't explain this while... Well, Romulans are scattering, and, uh... And there's a green disruptor <laughs> beam kind of, like, skims past yeah. your head after you say uh, it. I think Chella has been taking, like, has been doing scans as, like, any good Federation scientist. Uh, would I have been able to have got gathered a reading on that, uh, that little space zip zaps up? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Roll for me, then, um, like, um... Insight and science, then. Love to. <laughs> Please roll your zap zap. <laughs> I, I would like yeah. to zip, zap, and zap. Uh, oof, that's a 20 and an 8. So that is a success with a complication. Okay. Um, and with one success, I just because of the anomalies that are still kind of like obviously present around in uh, on the planet's surface as well, it's EM and gravimetric disturbances. I've been looking for like a two, I think there, unfortunately, and the complication, mm -hmm. uh, like fr like the EM like interference, like fries your tricorder. Ah. 
uh, for that extra little bit of uh, complication, could I, uh, I don't know, uh, take like a single point of stress because yeah. of the, it, it did hurt the little injury the hand. or something, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, the Klingons begin fanning out immediately and exchanging yep. disruptor fire, but I'm interested in what you guys want to do specifically. So it's your turn in the initiative. Any one of you can act, and then you can either keep the initiative or you can hand it over to me. I kind of look at Burrell really quick, and I just, like, free action, I just say, we should get the hell out of here. Like, let's leave. No. Okay. <laughs> Burrell's gone. <laughs> she's gonna, uh, she's gonna, um... Do you, mind, do you mind if I go first, okay? Um, she's gonna get low. She's got her disruptor out, her Klingon disruptor. The one that vaporized Romulan previously. I remember it. Um, and she's gonna make a beeline for that sub-commander, the one that she saw that was sort of in charge. She's gonna try and take them out. Yeah, no problem. Uh, I've got a Romulan Centurion. That'll have to do, won't, won't, oh. I? won't he? So yeah, he is... Uh, yeah, so you 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 scan the you you scan the level for the highest highest level with the highest health person, and you find the leader mm -hmm. of the group. Yeah, okay, uh, cool. As you're like shooting, I'm like yelling at you. If you kill them, we won't learn nothing. Neither will they. She's uh, in like she's like a shock. The like the eyes have rolled over. She's in battle mode right now. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, shooting is control and security. I haven't done this in so long. Um, but yeah, yeah. yeah, so roll me control and security. Difficulty is going to be one. It's, as ever, it's okay. the regular just difficulty. Do you want to add any dice? You've got two momentum. Do you want to spend any determination? Let's add uh, one die. Cool. So I'll take one momentum off of you guys there. All right. Pew. Two successes gives you a point of momentum, um, and so you manage to hit the Romulan Centurion. Can you do me the damage of the disruptor, please? Yup. Uh, that is far oh too many. Oh my god! That is far too many dice, right? Um, uh, the character sheets do this weird thing where they add oh, dice. Oh. So I have roll twenty working on this, by the way. But uh, so I, I, I change it to like from. Uh, energy to like the little selection for what weapon you've got um oh yeah so you can change it from disruptor to three from from like yeah but melee and ranged so, uh, uh -huh. okay. uh, uh, fix that and it should fix it but uh okay. uh, uh your disruptor what's it set at you've got uh, the what do you have a two or a disruptor one to pistols like, is a it three a... isn't it it's got three and then your security Three? is four. No, you are correct. Uh, actually, you you do do seven dice of damage. I'm so sorry. Right. I did not think that was the case. Um, so, in that uh, initial blast, you did two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve damage oh, to the Romulan Ulan. And I'm going to spend two threat for him to avoid that injury. Mm -hmm. Those two um, injuries. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> shit, yeah. I want to like draw that's aggro two injuries. on him. That's, that's <laughs> How many did I say? Eight, two, eight. three, four, five, six, seven, it's eight, nine, damage. ten, eleven, that's... twelve. And he's got no. Yeah, no, he's. That's... Is was he it... just immediately vaporized? Yeah, you just was he was it a that's was awesome. it a shot to no? I mean, it was actually if you okay. did two injuries, it was the first one. Was it was it stunning? Was it a injury to stun? Uh, yeah, I wasn't trying to kill him. I think I was he just trying dies? to disable him. Because because if you it, like it's rule rules uh -huh. are in if you hit someone again with an attack after they've like taken an injury and it's to stun it immediately it kind of goes to kill so like you just yeah you shoot him and he just falls flies back onto the ground um, and the Romulans are still fanning out still fighting uh, the, the well, Klingons. Do you folks want to have a little bit of a phaser fight or? We, because we could kind of wrap this up in like just how decisive that action was. Oh my god! I think she even did more damage. Two, four, six, eight, ten, oh, no, twelve. Mind, sorry. I mean, Chella could also just yell out over the battlefield to be like, "We don't want to fight, but you just saw what happened to one of your commanders." Um, I mean, 
Tim, if you want, if you want to actually de-escalate this yeah. and talk to them, we can. I'll try. Yeah, I'll try and do a presence and command. I'll try and do a presence and command. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I'm gonna use um, making the best of not the best to use one of my determination and and blow. So I'll get two automatic successes. Love and that. Do we have any momentum in the pool? Two. Yeah. All right. Can I use one gang uh, to get a third dice? Does anyone mind? Yeah. Okay. Go great. for it. All right. Here we go. Uh, oh, Jesus. About oh, three. Uh, three successes. I'll, uh, three successes will do it, from as far as I'm concerned. With a right, sweet. dead Romulan centurion having hit the deck, the Ulans all like hold their hands up, head over with their huge um, sh padded shoulders, and like, you know. Disruptor pistols in hand that you've managed to like s somehow stop the Klingons as well. Like everyone's just at de escalation. The Klingons, you can hear like growling under their breath, like just ready to serve these Romulans if needs be, but they are kind of holding back and occasionally just like it's just your presence, um, Oshron, that's just kind of keeping both sides at bay just now. You have an opportunity to speak. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I'm just gonna throw like one of those, one of those just kind of like uh, a card vibe, playing on commands to like, like the knock it off, like stop being childish and and act with honor kind of vibe. Uh, uh, and then to the Romulans, I just look at them and I'm like, um, I want to say, We'll share what we've learned about this place, and we'll both leave without killing anyone else. Agreed? That is... Amicable. And then before they even finish saying, I, I just say, good. And then I kind of, like, get the Klingons to take them so the Klingons don't, like, feel too bad about it. Um, and I get everyone out of this base. Because I feel like the... And I even say to the one that was going to answer me, I'm like, do you really want to be around when that blue thing comes back? The uh, commander, what was his name? Krusk? Krusk? Krusk, yeah. Krusk. The commander, like, just kind of grabs your upper arm, um, kind of brings you in just as a kind of bit of discretion and says, Prisoners, you are asking my box to take prisoners. No, we're not taking prisoners. We're actually going to, like, all leave here together. What? You heard me, Commander. I'll go full, like, like boss mode. Okay, roll me another presence and command. Okay, and I'm gonna blow my second determination. Uh, okay. My character sheet. Uh, this one is. You're gonna need to um, for a second determination. You're gonna need to challenge one of your values. Or accept a comp, or accept a complication in this instance, so you can get one back. Let's have a look at your. I don't know if I have any values that values would work for this. Bit. That'd be challenged. Um, I guess I could challenge. There's always ways into the inner circle. I guess if I fail, I wouldn't be able to be in the inner circle with these guys anymore. But I can't think of another. You value are that challenging that. Like you're not being diplomatic with this guy. You are not trying to get in with them. So if you challenge that value. And if you scrubbed it out and we rewrote it at the end or in between the sessions, I'd give you a point of determination back. Otherwise, we'll start. Yeah, unless I succeed this, start. right? Then I can. Then I keep it. Is that how that works? No, no, no. Um, I don't think so. So when you challenge a value, you effectively scrub it out and you can't use it until you rephrase it. Sure. Okay. But scrubbing well, that I'll... value gives you a point of determination back. I'll still, I'll still do it. I think that's the one to use. Uh... Okay. So then you'll and immediately then spend the determination on this check? Yeah. yeah. Um, for sake of time, can I spend the determination just to succeed? Yeah. Yeah, no problem. If that's okay with everyone? Yeah, of course. Um, and yeah, so he says... Very well. You were lucky I'm not putting anything in a report. What report? And I just walk away. 
yeah, it's some stupid empty threat that I gave yeah. up halfway through saying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and he probably did too. So he 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 like heads off, and they they basically take the Romulans captive, um, and head over away from you. So yeah, there's no there's nothing stopping you between the this grey hippo style hall with all these columns in it. You've got this like broken up in ruins, like s- huge like ceiling above them being supported by these columns, crackling with that electromagnetic energy. Um, and you, even without having to look at your tricorders, you will get that feeling of like energy is like moving into here. This is where it's all coalescing. What you like to do? Um. So you say all the energy is coalescing into this one place. Do we know exactly where? And because you said this was like a quite big kind of thing. Do we know, particularly if it's a certain room or a certain part of this big hall or a certain column? Yeah, absolutely. Can, you you know, can. Can I, um, can I ascertain where it's all flowing to specifically? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so. Um, so these veins of power are all flowing towards a central pentagonal pillar in the centre of the hall. And it's set up on a raised pentagonal platform. And it's the tallest pillar in the entire hall. And then the ceiling far above it is wreathed in strong pulses of blue energy, as if the whole roof of the hall was acting as some kind of massive battery. I would like to get close to that and take some tricorder readings. All right, absolutely. Give me a reason and en- uh, reason and science, reason and engineering difficulty. Can I get one of the Romulan and or Klingon dudes to like assist, seeing as they probably have the exact same people doing similar things or wanting to do similar things? Uh, yes, the Romulans will agree. The Romulans will absolutely agree to that. The Klingons, they'll observe. But they, they won't, you know, they're not going to take scans or something. They, they don't have any scientists amongst them. We are the scientists. But the commander asks you to share the information. I mean, that was the deal, right? So, yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so, reason, engineering. Um, can I still use the EPS thing? Because it's all energy going in? Or is this something different? Absolutely, you can, yeah. Yeah, process yeah. that, that. Sorry, did you say any difficulty? Three. Okay. Uh, I would like to buy an, an extra dice, if I could, please. The momentum. Yeah. So I'm rolling S- three. Off there. Um, and I'm getting assist from the Romulans, right? Yes. Actually, so I'll lower it to two, because I just that'll be quicker oh, okay. for me. I'll lower it to two. Cool. That's easier and quicker once I'm just doing this. There we go. Work. Got three. Beautiful. Together. So, um, with the um, three... Sorry, two. two. It's three, including the Romulan. Yeah, one yeah. For the yeah. Assist. Sorry. So yeah. So um, with the with the two that you got, you've got the success you needed, and this pillar in the center, essentially, as you guys all get closer, it seems to be receiving some kind of transmission. Oh. Um, that's what you know, like, kind of seems to be happening. There's something about the energy flow that seems to be out of alignment as well. So it's a message? Potentially. But in order to possibly try and actually see what that might be, uh, you would need to work on it. You'd need to actually align whatever alien transmitters are receiving this message. I'm going to tell that, obviously, to Burrell. Mm-hmm. Uh, this, I think this is this might be more than I can work out I mean this might require an entire team of linguistics scientists and engineers just to figure out what this thing does or what the message could be done, if it is a message um, I, uh... we don't have that so get what you can we'll okay. all pitch in and help we'll get exactly everything we can and bring that back. Could right. be we might have to come out here again with more people. Sure. Um, okay. So I'm going to take as many readings as I can, including the um, 
the way it's flowing, like the, it's gonna sound weird, the rhythm of the, of the energy, you know, as, as it's going, because you said it, it on power distribution. Alignment. Yes, yes. To try and kind of, so if it's like a pattern, and then yeah. maybe someone who's a lot smarter than Harvey in linguistics or, or, or science can try and work out, but just get as much information about this thing as we possibly can. Cool, all right. So let's do a big old, um, uh, lovely group check because uh, I do want to kind of get to this as well, especially just before uh, we lose Tim. So, um, give me whatever you're. We don't have to mess around with it. Give me your attributes and disciplines. Figure those out amongst yourselves. Harvey again, I think, leading this task with a, probably a good reason in engineering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, applying mm -hmm. your focus as well. well. Not applying your focus here. I don't no think, focus. unless you've got any communication-based focuses. No. Uh, all right, so folks, throw in those uh, assist die as well. Um, this mm -hmm. is all going to be difficulty three as well total. So I'd like to do a I'd like to do a presence and command because I'm I'm kind of like coordinating the whole thing. Yeah. Default coordinating. I love and it. And I want to yeah. use negotiations as a as a focus if I can. Yeah, yeah, of cool. course, that's perfect. Yeah, coordination, yeah. perfect, cool. Here's my assist. Oh, right. nice. yeah, that makes that makes up for the last couple of rolls. Wow, really good. <laughs> You're damn good at negotiating. Oshan's making up for Burrell right now. She's not in the right mindset. She's just killed another Romulan. <laughs> yeah, and Rom can't decide if she's pleased or not. Uh, Burrell, as a blue electronic charge races up your arm, I need you to take six stress, please. <laughs> Six? Six stress. Oh yeah. my god. Oh, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's you a You can injury. spend two momentum to ignore the injury. Uh, avoid the injury. I just want to double check if it is, it's an immediate spend, so you can give me threat to avoid that. Okay, just for those at home who are watching who may not be familiar with Star Trek and Adventures, and not because I've completely forgotten, but what's an injury do? Uh, basically puts you out of action. So it's this This is oh. going to be an injury to um, stun, not to kill. Mm -hmm. So your life won't be threatened, but you'll be effectively kind of like out of the scene, unable to perform tests, that kind of thing. It happens oh. when you take five stress or more in yeah. one hit. Yeah. Um, like that's story. how you killed that Romulan, because you did two injuries in one hit. Yeah, I oh, mean, yeah. that's how that Romulan dropped. Uh, so technically, it'd be like a, in D and D, you just hit zero. Okay, okay, okay. So now you're um, rolling your con save, so if you can be an undead and go back up with one hit point <laughs> or an orc, like that's how that that's how that works. Okay, uh, well, I'll I'll give you a threat to to not be completely KO'd by this. All right, but I will be like, like, sat on the floor, like cradling my arm while I'm like. Right. It hurt a lot. Cool. No problem. We got a doctor. Uh, we got a two from Oshron. We got a one from yourself, Tom. Um, Anisha, are you throwing in as well? I'm. I'm going to throw in as well. Nice. One. Another one as well. So that's going to give us one momentum. Um, and so, um, you guys carefully adjust the power flow to the transmitter and slowly dial in the harmonic resonance. Swirling cloud of energy floating in front of the pl the pillar soon coalesces into the form of a tall humanoid alien. They are clad in a form-fitting dress with what appears to be wings on their back and a small sweeping tiara on their head. They have short dark hair and the most striking feature of their face are the wide open eyes that are solid blue with no evidence of an iris or pupil. As their form takes full shape within the holographic sim uh, shimmer, they seem to blink in surprise, and then desperately reach a hand, uh, two hands out towards you. I am Ash Tamalia of the Tilakal. We are trapped and we need your help. Please, can you? And then, as you kind of see and regard this, before you've even got a chance to speak, a massive surge of energy flows through the pillar, and all around the hypostyle hall surges up the column. The ceiling brightens for a second to the intensity of a high noon sunlight and then deafeningly whooshes and releases the power that fills the area. You see a massive pulse of blue energy shoot out of the roof 
of the hall and streak out across the planet's atmosphere like a borealis and then beyond into space. Assessor Tredic suddenly enters again. You hear that kind of like <clears throat> as he teleports back into the scene. Uh, and I'm going to spend, let's say I'm going to spend three threat for that because this is kind of appropriate for what's happening. Sorry. This is almost it, Tim, I promise. We'll be, be away in just a second, just a second. No, it is not yet time. And Tridic glares at the away team and your assembled landing parties from the Klingons and the Romulan sides as well, all regarding him as you all turn around with an expression that suggests both frustration and pity. The true way must be maintained. You have overstayed your welcome. Now you must leave. And Tridic splays out their fingers in a quick, intricate design, and the air shimmers with arcane symbols, uh, lined in the electric blue energy that's been in the area. The holographic image of the alien you just saw before you shudders briefly and then winks out of sight with a silent cry, a scream etched onto her face. The tracework laced throughout the hippostyle's halls, walls, and pillars and flooring pulse with that bright blue energy, and then you sense a surge of raw power all around you that is both ear-splitting and hair-raising. In a moment lasting a long, deeply held breath, the blinding blue light clears, and you find yourselves on the bridge of the Maprol. <laughs> I throw up. <laughs> like, just, like, you do all feel pretty nauseated right, and disoriented. That bullion, uh, that bullion burrito <laughs> just comes back like with a vengeance, and it's just Blue. like, yeah, just done. <laughs> you hear like roughly, kind of like again, kind of dizzy in the periphery of your sight and your and your hearing. You hear Klingons kind of shouting like intruder alert, and then there's like the captain's like wait, wait, and the captain is kind of like holding on to um, you, Oshron, and he looks at you in the eyes and he says, what, what is happening? Oh my god. Uh, big things. Uh, I, I don't know how else to put it. Oshron's just kind of like, we, yes. We should probably get out of here before that, that Romulan away team regroups on their own bird of prey and mm -hmm. starts uh trying to find us on the view screen <laughs> um you see um uh and sensors scream out from the side of the bridge uh pick up a massive power surge from the planet captain somewhere deep within um and on the screen you see a hitherto unnoticed emitter array seems to flash on the planet's surface and it issues forth a bright blue energy pulse and that borealis thing that you saw kind of from the surface as well um, actually kind of like starts to encapsulate the whole planet um, and sensors kind of indicate that there's there's some kind of planetary shield has shimmered into effect basically planetary shielding nice. not like a hundred percent uncommon um, but pretty uncommon um, and it's very kind of futury kind of tech um, unknown to you obviously it's like discovery like 32nd century tech but it's you know there's there's probably some planetary shield ding in some places but it's like definitely not like a whole just the whole thing so the whole planet now is just this kind of glowing lightly glowing blue orb and that um, massive power surge um, unnoticed originally uh, on a kind of emitter array um, starts shearing towards uh, the ship um, even while cloaked um, all the lights are still down um, that shimmering point uh, you know is coming up towards you and there's screams of brace for impact from the Klingons as there's a kind of shudder you manage to brace yourselves just before it smashes into the ship and on the main view screen yeah, on the main view screen, Harvey, you see that subspace tearing effect that you saw from the um, your freighter. 
um, from the gift targ. And then, um, yeah, yeah, on that view screen, you see the space around you kind of fold in on itself like a piece of like cosmic origami. That subspace tear open up, and then a massive planet appears in view for you. Crackling over the comms, uh, you hear, um, uh, you just appeared on station sensors. Uh, Captain, Captain, what are you doing here? Report. And then another voice, Admiral Hebert's. Uh, Captain, Captain, report. And up on the view screen is Ops at Narendra Station. And Helm confirms, you are you are just at Narendra Station. Burrell is kind of like wordless. She doesn't know how to process like any of what's just happened. I, I Chief, I Lieutenant, anyone, Doctor, I report. respond back. Uh, uh, we've got a. Like, Clear us for talking. We've got a lot to shock about. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll see you back here on the station. All right. Thank you very much. Tim, feel free to slip away when you need, as you need to. Thank you yeah, so much. Yeah, I got to go, everyone. I'm so sorry. No problem. Uh, for what it's worth, uh, this Sunday night I start season four of Lost Voyages. So if you want to come run and watch me run through a Star Trek series, uh, I've just finished writing the entire season. <laughs> such a nerd! I'm such a nerd. Uh, so yeah, love you lots. Bye everyone. Thank Live you. long and prosper. Uh, and folks in chat, I'm going to throw us the "We'll be right back" screen so I can fix out these cameras. Unless Tim's just going to be there and do Tim's that. Tim's just going to be there for you. Okay. Well, thank you. I'm gonna cut to it just for brief seconds. We'll be back in like 30 seconds and we'll be back to Eka and we'll figure out whatever is happening to you in the break, I guess. We'll be right back.
Oh, we're back. Ooh. We're back. We're back with Eka in the brig. I don't have a brig um, sound effect, I'm afraid. Um, I'm sure there, sure there are some. It's that fuzzy um, uh, when you're tapping a force field. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, you just do a little sort of... poke. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you're just probably kind of like mm -hmm. standing in there waiting. How would how would they wait in the brig? I think Eka is just sitting on like the back bench, just just waiting expectantly for them to either come back with absolutely nothing or uh, for the hammer to drop, but is sitting very casually. Yeah, I like that. Like almost just trying to psych out the guard a little bit <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> yeah, just just. I like in a very nice business suit. Just I, I don't think that this is the first brig that Eka has ever been in, and it probably won't be the last. Yeah. And so I think just trying to be as casual as possible. Yeah. All right. I think it will set us up for a nice, cool, juicy uh, social conflict here. A little bit of an interrogation situation. Heck yeah. And so. Commander Develli. Sounds like she should be in like a noir film, right? Hey, Develli. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, no, Develli. Yeah, Commander Develli. Do Dovelli. I need to I need to come up with an alien pronunciation. Uh, Dovelli uh, enters the chat. Uh, comes into heads into the brig. Pad in one hand, just casually heading over to your cell. Just mm -hmm. speak a word presses a few buttons on the panel and the force field mm -hmm. buzzes out of existence. Well, pillar of the community. Shall we? Lead the way. And your council? Well, um, my council failed to pick up, so I suppose I'll be representing myself. Very well. You could make your mark on the pad that you've agreed to that. And she's very, like, by the numbers, analytical, like, got to make okay if you're going to do that got to make sure that's all above board that kind of thing press the button follow me and she brings you into a uh, dimly lit interrogation room just one small table a couple of chairs either side and she takes a seat with a uh, security officer who will not be named who will not speak they are there as, as, as a paid extra. It's not Alba? Um, oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Alba, they're just like in the corner, like hunched on the little... This this is characterception, we can't do this. Alright, Alba, Alba's... Ensign. Al yeah. Alba's in the corner. Ensign? Not having taken a chair. <laughs> Alba's just in a little tank in the office. <laughs> no! Alba is behind, you know, like the two-way mirrored glass? But it's like, at the moment, just they've not frosted yeah. it. It's just the glass. But, like, they are there behind it, like, in a tank of water. But, like, monitoring the yeah. interrogation. Okay. I got it. I got it. Uh, cool. Ensign? There are some, like, um, dolphin echo noises. A little bloop. Yeah. <laughs> echo and the dolphin. Yeah. Anyways. So, do I talk first? Do you talk first? What's, what's the deal here? How have you want to begin? I could begin asking you questions if you'd I like. I mean, you're the one with the questions. 
You're the one with the questions. This is supposed to be an interrogation, or is this a conversation? No, this is an... This is a form of questioning. When did you first learn of Therogen being dealt in your establishment? In my establishment? Mm -hmm. There's no Therogen being dealt in my establishment. But there is. And she uh, produces a good kind of fair amount of um, hard evidence. Um, sensor, like record, internal sensor records. Uh, she's got some uh, informant type stuff in here as well. Um, she's got some samples, witness statements, that kind of thing. So on the face of it, in front of you, she's got, not overwhelming, but she's got kind of a good degree of evidence. Um, and she starts to, like... If being distributed in my establishment, you can be rest assured that it was not under on my orders or under my watch. But it was under your watch. In your fact. Order. You're the owner of I'm the owner. The bar. Your name is, as they say, above the door. So you bear some responsibility for what happens. And as I said, the minimum is that we do, can revoke your license. Do you bear responsibility for Thing, you bear responsibility for things that happen on the station then, correct? I bear responsibility for the security for personnel that are under my command. And uh, do you have any proof that these uh, people that are distributing Theragen are doing so as employees of ACA's establishment? Actually, I do. And she produces a report which and sensor records which seem to show um uh jagadish uh supplying um and the evidence points to him effectively like running the operation from your back rooms and then like supplying in like your restrooms and like even sometimes out on tables and stuff like that um and not anything from Jagadish specifically in terms of like a confession or anything, any statements from him, but there are witness statements mm -hmm. saying that he said he was doing it at your behest. <sighs> Interesting. Inconvenient. How so? What would I have to gain from bringing Theragen on this station? Latinum. Connections. That's so very short-sighted. I do better business working with the Federation on this station than selling illicit substances, allegedly. It's in my best interest to work with you on this. And it's just very convenient that the minute I stumble upon something that's very, very important, that these trumped up charges get put against me. I'm listening. There's, I think, more going on to this station than you understand. Than I understand. The commander? Mm -hmm. Commander? Mm -hmm. 
I mean, have you even checked the lower levels? Yes. I know every pit fight. I know every uh, gambling den. I know about the Therogen problem down there as well. Believe me, we have raided the Klingons as many times as I can count in a month. It always seemed to move around. And then I thought, it's got to be on the upper levels. Convenient that you happen to find business owner who happens to employ Orions to pin this on? I'm not making any assumptions. The evidence I have points to the Orions in your employ. I don't think I have anything really to say to you other than that I am innocent in this and that I'm being implicated. Well, then perhaps I will leave these with you, as you are your own counsel. And you can see for yourself just what we've got on you. So hopefully when I come back, we can get a proper confession. Look, Enora, you're liked on this station. It's Enora, actually. Like Lenore without the L. Okay. Enor, you're liked on this station. If you can... Just fess up. Work with us on combating the problem station-wide. I can see what I can do when it comes to the Federation uh, Judiciary. Why would I fess up to something I have no part in? Okay. Okay. Well, like I said, I'll leave these with you then. And she gets up and she heads out the door. And Alba swims off to another part of the security. So long and thanks for all the fish. Um, but you are left with the evidence that has been presented um, at you. I'm going to try and pour over it and see if there's holes in this story. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so let's make this a difficulty zero test. Sure. But every success will get you a point of momentum to essentially like ask a question or establish a truth about, uh, try to establish sure. a trait about it. Uh, insight and security? Absolutely. That sounds perfect. I'd take reason as well if you wanted reason, but insight's great. Um, Both work. Yeah, Both cool. are cornerstones. Did you um, want to add any momentum, spend any determination? I'm also going, uh, because I've got uh, Gilo, uh, yeah. a former uh, a former lawyer, uh, as a host, um, I'd like to add a focus on, uh, on, on, I guess law is too broad. It would probably have to be specific, right? I take criminology, honestly. Criminology? Yeah. Okay, I'll take crime. Like, cr- like crime, like figuring out this crime, like that's yeah. fine. That's fine for the purposes of the scene and the focus and everything. All good. Absolutely. I'm going to, I'm going to call upon the value of uh, the best hosts money can buy. Yeah. Uh, so that I can bump that determination and then get the extra die. Mm-hmm. Um, and... Do you want to add uh, any others? So I'll have... I don't really have any more momentum other than the one that I just spent. That's fine. Um, And I think that's all I've got for determination is just the one point. So... Mm-hmm. Yep. You know what? Uh, it's it's getting close. Uh, I'll I'll give you two threat to do another uh, another die Beautiful. if I can. Thank you. Yeah, I will take that. All right. Okay. Roll them. Let's see them. Uh, so that's five, five successes. Five successes. That's five momentum for you to ask questions, and you had a sixth momentum in there anyway. As, oh yeah, a sixth momentum okay. anyway as well. 
So ask away. I'm sure that I would um, be in uh, Tom and Susie's minds when I say, just spend it, spend it, spend it, spend it. Figure out I'd what love you want to do. Okay. Uh, are there holes in this evidence? All over the place. It's like Swiss cheese. Okay. It's clever. It's very clever. And if you didn't have a lifetime's worth of knowledge about catching criminals and evidence and how that's all put together, <coughs> you, you, you would look at it and you'd just be overwhelmed by it. This is... Yeah, so this is uh, this is a sloppy story that they've put together. But it, like in the way that I guess it's like textbook tight. Do you know what I mean? Like it's just yeah. so obviously wrapped up. It's so perfectly wrapped up. In a way, that, yeah, oh, the, absolutely, yeah. Maybe that speaks too, the story. The story's too good, is what yeah. it is. And maybe that speaks a little bit to Commander Develli's like. Um, even though she she's known for having a keen eye for detail, like she's pretty smug uh, when it comes okay. to putting these things together. Um, in the way that Zach Dawn's are kind of stereotyped to be, I guess. Um, but yeah, she she really does have that kind of focus mm. and drive to solve this problem. therogen has been in a problem what? on the station for ages. Yeah. It's like, why, why is this a, that's, that's, I guess my next question is, why now? You got too close. Okay. So they're looking for a scapegoat. All right. So that's two questions. We've got four more. Okay. We got four more to go. We've got four more. And these are powerful, remember? Yeah. Uh, ooh. Okay. So. I'm excited. And I'm. Shout them out too, gang, if you've got any. Yeah, if, you've, if anybody yeah. else has a. Group, um, group think is always best thing. Could be, is there a thread back to somebody? You know, does one of these clues, you know, one of these holes lead to someone? Like a. Mm. Is there. A, a link? Is there a, a. I guess also, is there maybe a. Um. Of the holes in this story, what is the best one to get me out of this situation? Mm, that's a good one. Oh, oh my god. Um, Jagadish hasn't confessed. And the evidence linking the two of you to this is not very solid. Uh, it's quite good at framing him very specifically mm -hmm. to the degree with which actually you doubt like he might have actually done this. Yeah, um, because I've also been like keeping a fairly decent eye on Jagadish, so I have like records of movements and that sort of thing. Um, is there any way that I would be able to corroborate corroborate my evidence, like to give him and myself an alibi? Um. Yeah, most likely. Yeah, and I'm not going to count that as a, one of the questions. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Because you have been kind of like, Tadok's been keeping an eye on both yeah. him and Seema. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I can. Uh, so I can get. Okay. This is probably. Who is. Judging by all this evidence, like you can see exactly who it's pointing to, but most. I think most importantly is who is this pointing away from? Like, who is the one that's probably pulling all these strings? My like, answer is going to be cryptic. Okay. But my As answer, it should be. My answer is you know them both. Okay. 
Okay. I got a couple theories. <laughs> I got a couple theories. Mm. Still got two momentum. And bear in mind yeah, as do. well, you can establish a trait using that two momentum. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm going to... I'm going to establish... Uh, I'm going to establish a trait... Hmm, I'm trying to figure out what kind of trait would be best for this circumstance. Is it just, do you want something that's just going to kind of help you in uh, specifically just right now in this, like, negotiation? I want to kind of bring her back in and, like, do that social encounter yeah, role. Yeah, like a, a quick social encounter role. Yeah, yeah. for sure, for sure. Um, so something just helps you there, I guess? Yeah, so yeah. I'm, I'm going to look for a trait, uh, like, say, like... Like, there's the, there's an obvious glaring hole in this evidence that I can point to. Yeah. Like, like you've overlooked something. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, all right. So, once she comes back in, and she asks, "Have you had enough t time to reconsider?" Have you? This is all very good evidence that draws the wrong conclusion. You've overlooked a whole bunch of things. I doubt that. Security logs from Eka's place, tracking the movements of Jagadish, corroborated by my security officer, Tadok. You familiar with him? I am. Vulcans are also very meticulous and keep very good records. Vulcan bartender? Very good at keeping records? He's not a bartender. Tadok's a lot more than that, actually. You sell him, sell, you sell him too short. Sometimes I do too. That's fair. We have alibis for these dates and times. And she like compares the pads probably that you're kind of, you know, looking at, stuff like that. Um, and so yeah, you provide your evidence, she's countering it with hers, but you've, you know, got that uh, thing. All right, so this is going to be in a post-test. This is okay. going to be difficulty two for her your trait in effect increases her difficulty it's going to be difficulty one for you but she does say to you that she can smell deceit and i'm going to spend three threat to effectively spend a point of determination okay for my npc uh all right i'm just going to check over her special rules uh she's not detecting hidden danger she are you intimidating or threatening her i don't feel like you are so that doesn't apply i also have dauntless uh so i can add if am i being threatened actively i think you're being, think you're being intimidated i think you're being i'm intimidated. definitely trying to be intimidated so i can add a bonus d20 to this dice pool nice uh crane advantage three is, uh, follow my lead no okay she is not that well equipped special rules wise for this but that is okay um she does have a focus in criminology, so we're going to put the focus on. She's going to be rolling presence and security, because um, I think she's trying to impress upon you this stuff. But if you wanted to use something like reason, uh, or even like daring or control, if you're being quite meticulous about your evidence and stuff like that, I'm willing to take those. Security, most definitely, is what we're going to be squaring off okay. against, I think. I think I'm going to go with reason security, just to try and poke holes in all her arguments. Love it. Um, specifically. Uh, it was either that or it was going to be presence as well, but... Yeah. Cause... Uh, and just because I can, I'm going to spend another five threat on some more dice. So I'm going to roll a bunch. Big okay. stakes. Big plays. Big, big, big stakes. Big, big money. Big plays. 
All also, right. remember, um, Anita, move to combat is a valid option <laughs> in any encounter. Switch to combat. Uh, f- fitness and security is not Eka's. Uh, security, yes. Fitness, no. Oh, okay. um, fitness. Never mind. Oh, right, yeah, 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 for combat. Uh, oh, I'm going to. Uh, I'm also going to give you two points of threat for another die if I can. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so up to eight. Can I probably. Wait, we've got momentum still. You could just spend the momentum. Oh. Okay. Uh, momentum. So yes, I'll. Um, I'll spend a two. I'll spend one momentum for an extra die, and then I'll spend uh, another a momentum and a threat for the second one. Okay, so that means I'm rolling five dice altogether. Fine by me. That's all fine. That's all fine. Uh, all this right. Plus two. Uh, seven successes. That's that's how many I need. Yes. Did you spend that determination? I did spend a determination earlier. Um, if you challenge a value. I'll need- you can get one back. Love a challenging value. Love a challenging value. I'm gonna. I'm gonna characters. challenge. I'm gonna challenge staying safe. Sometimes means trusting others. Oh, that's a good one. I love that. I love that one. I'm gonna cross that one off. Yeah. And we're gonna probably rewrite it. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. To something else Never later trust on. Never <laughs> Always right. look for where the knife's coming from. Yeah, love it, love it. Okay, so that uh, if you want to spend it, it gives you like two, two more successes on top of this. Okay, so, you're rolling so five dice. Five dice. Five dice. Two successes on top of that. I need a success on every die at least. And I've got the focus of criminology. Oh, that's four. You are equal, but. Let me tell you that, and here, here we go into the into the devilry of the detail of the rules. Here, her difficulty was two. Your difficulty was one. So technically, you would have scored more momentum than she did. Yeah. So you have succeeded. <laughs> on a, like a technicality, on like a <laughs> technically test. correct. The best part. The best of... kind of correct. That's kind of correct. It's technically correct. <laughs> Um, and so, like, there's a, this tete-a-tete back and forth, pouring over this evidence for probably, like, an hour until she finally sees it, and you can see her face just drop. Now do you believe me? Listen, I have a couple of enemies at this point, and I could probably point you in a few different directions of people that would probably have it out for me. She picks up a pad and she says, Ensign Alba, bring these two... (laughs) Flap, flap, flap. Flap, 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 flap. Bring these two Klingon Becks into custody. I need to speak to them again. Let me guess, those two Klingons work for uh, Ambassador Yang? Um, House Ortag? Yes. That would be... Yeah, that's one of the people that probably has it out for me right now. I uh, might have embarrassed the ambassador. Put a target on my back as a response. This is some way to get retribution. Klingons and their blood feuds, you know how that is. Blood feud? With who? Wow, you're really not up to date with your Klingon politics. No, I know what a blood feud is. With who? That's serious. Who's got a blood feud on the station? You were in... Was uh, was this uh, commander in the room with... Uh... No? You don't? Ortog has had it out for Burrell for a while. 
Morale specific, the chief specifically, or the family? Family. <sighs> okay. I had a uh, and Borel has been very brave on her part. I'm trying to, you know how it is, trying to play to the Federation while also trying to be diplomatic in these things. And anybody that's helping Borel usually winds up the target of House Ortog's ire. I have to talk to Lieutenant Carbell about this. Get that thing on perspective. Listen, there was a there was a couple incidents between the two of them where things got a little tense, and this is I'm telling you this under the, the confidence of security. If this gets any more exacerbated, the whole station could probably implode. You gotta keep a lid on it. I mean, we keep a lid on the uh, Klingons as best we can. You know that. This is keeping a lid on things. Just... Try and... I'm trying to keep the chief safe. Alright. I need some time to get this all in order, so... You're free to go. Um, oh, and, uh... If you happen to talk to that uh, that one Klingon, ask him how his shoulder is, because I think I dislocated it last time I saw him. Maybe you need to stay in that chair? You know what? Not today. That's what I figured. You're free to go. Yeah, <laughs> you head out. I can also just slide the security footage of that whole incident across, I'm just like, before you jump to conclusions and I'll just leave. That's totally fair. Um, all right. Uh, a quick debrief then with ah. our COs uh, for the incoming away away team. Uh, yeah. So the general and the admiral is kind of asking for like an informal report. Uh, the doctor as well, obviously, um, and Dr. Talia Ferrer is there as well. Well, we arrived on the planet, detected a energy surge, and I described how we like found the place, we got into it. Upon arrival, we saw a strange alien um, person. I described them, the blue, blue skin, the <laughs> paralysis demon the nature paralysis of them. paralysis demon? Um, they were conversing with Romulans. Uh, they urged us somewhat to, to leave. They were speaking with the Romulans, um, wanted to talk to us somewhat, but when we tried to probe further, they uh, didn't seem too interested. Osheron tried his best to smooth things over. Um, conversation didn't progress much further than that, unfortunately. And then the creature, the uh, alien, sorry, um, disappeared into a subspace warp bubble, similar to the one Harvey and I experienced, and the Doctor um, Eka experienced. At which point the Romulans attacked. Um, trying my best to defuse the situation somewhat, I decided to attack the Commander, hoping to disable him. Unfortunately, the Commander didn't survive. Though the Romulans were pacified, there were no further incidents. Harvey, you want to take over? Because from that point onwards, I was dealing with the Bex and the... Oh, um, yeah. Uh, uh, sure, Chief. 
Um, and then um, I tracked the uh, uh, the energy that was coalescing into one point, a rather large pillar um, in the in the center. And um, I think it's quite difficult to to realize what it actually does. It could have been trying to communicate, or it could be doing something else. It it's you would need an entire, probably an entire science team with a linguistics team and an engineering team just to figure out what it even does. Um, but a lot of that energy is going into that thing. And, um, and, um, we, um, I, I don't know what you would call it. Um, a, a projection, a hologram came up of, um, a unknown species. Um, they were asking for help. And then the, um, I'm not sure if I got his name. I think it was like Dilagav or something like that. I'm not entirely sure. The assessor. The assessor. The assessor. The assessor. That was it. That's what it was it. The assessor. And he was like, he's devoted his life to protecting the Tilagar, I believe. Uh, almost sounded a little bit reverent. Yeah. Like it uh, wasn't the appropriate time. Um, yes, he it, 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 apparently not, to, but I mean, it seemed like that the hologram they were asking for help. Whether it was a hologram or a being of, you know, a, an actual being, I, I I don't know, Admiral. Um, at that point, we um, well, we. we uh, we got transported up to uh, the Klingon ship. A shield went around the planet, and before we knew it, we were here. Well, yeah. Um, I mean, we weren't expecting you for at least another 12 hours, and there's no way, even at maximum warp, you could have got back here in time. I would love to know how they did it. I mean, if we could travel that quick. I mean, think of the advantages of that. I mean, using a subspace bubble to cut corners around space, it's it's, it's fascinating. Being it would transported. be revolutionary. And the doctor, Dr. Telly Ferris, speaks up as well, you know, being transported in, in dozens of light years in the space of a few heartbeats. It's kind of unimaginable. It's, it's, it's you know, yeah. Philosopher's Stone of Warp technology, isn't it, really? Well, I mean, before we had warp technology, I imagine warp speed was very similar. It, 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 Maybe. You know, nothing's Maybe. impossible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, General Cargan turns to the, um, particularly to the Admiral, but to the kind of, a, the you know, you as the assembled group at this moment, and he says, So, you have your answers? perhaps more questions than you thought but how are you to go back there is no way you're going to convince federation starfleet and your science teams to be able to get down there and actually investigate these things and then the admiral's kind of like got her her finger to her face and she's kind of thinking and she says no 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 i think there's a way i think there's a way to spin this i think there's a way we can make this work and still get there and actually still investigate we haven't got much time to lose. I'm going to inform Starfleet Command of the situation here in the Expanse, and they're going to have to agree with me. The Romulans are up to something. They're crossing over the neutral zone, and they're entering the Expanse. And it's com- and we're confident. It's And she's almost kind of telling herself, trying to convince mm-hmm. herself. We're confident that it's a clear and present threat to the station and the peace between us and the Klingon Empire. Well, I mean, if the Romans got hold of the technology that they can travel that quick, then yes, it would be for the entire and Federation. And they did fire upon us without provocation. Well, we're looking at an archaeological arms race, in effect. <laughs> General, didn't you say that Klingon intelligence had suggested that cloaked warbirds were pushing deeper into the expanse anyway, outside of the neutral zone? Yep. We've run out of time to either argue or confirm the fact. I'm going to pull the ships back. I'm going to call in the flotilla. General Cargan and I, 
we're going to put the entire sector on alert. Next stop is a council of war, I guess. And that oh. is where we're going to end the episode. <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> it's a big one. It's a big uh -oh. one. And if you've been paying attention to the star dates, there's going to be some pretty big news coming out of the Gamma Quadrant very, very, uh -oh. very shortly. <laughs> Real soon, we've got the Dominion War coming. Real soon. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, when Paul uh, gets in. Who when Paul doesn't Harvey love? gets sent across to the front line. <laughs> no, 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 you're all good. You're like you're like the other side of the quadrants, but there there is just that historical problem: the fact that then you know the Federation, the Klingons, they do kind of part ways. Yeah. At some point in the near future. The Klingons. Does oh, the Klingons quite attack, know. don't they? Deep Space Nine yeah, to attack the Dominion. I don't quite know how that's going to all pan yeah. out. Yeah. Oh, it's quite. I, I really like that the part station. Because it's almost like the entire Federation changes into a militaristic. Just everything is yeah. military then. It's really oh, fascinating. It's a quadrant level threat. They like have yeah. to, right? Yeah. All who right. doesn't love fighting a war on all fronts? You know, why not? Let's fight the Romulans right. while we fight the Dominion. Let's yeah. go for it. Woo! Uh, all right, that was the Assessor, Assessor's Gambit, chums. Thank you so much for joining me. Why don't you tell us where you're on the internet, what you're all up to, all the usual shenanigans. Uh, Anita, tell us about that Kickstarter again. Uh, yes, so Capers Cyberpunk uh, is live on Kickstarter. We are now 2,000 away from hitting our $8,000 goal. Uh, so uh, back it, it's uh, a super powered RPG of Cyberpunk's fighting the Megacorps, and I did graphic design for it. Um, other than that, you can find me later tonight over on Alt Haven uh, for uh, some Pathfinder. Um, I'm about to play Pathfinder 2nd Edition for the first time, and it's going to be fun. Um, and then also uh, you can find me Saturday mornings for Morning Ritual. Uh, our guest this week is actually the leadership team from Critical Misses. So it's me, Noir, uh, Nikki, Darby, and AJ are all, uh, we're doing like a little bit of a round table chat and we've got some cool announcements for the channel that are coming up. Um, other than that, I think that's all I can say for now. But that's now. it for me. Oh, we love a little NDA. All right, lovely. Teaser. Tease, tease, tease. Uh, Tom, tease us with what you're up to. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Um, currently just this. Um, however, I might get streaming again if I get my PC, my new PC, which is still a month or two away, at least. What? I would imagine probably about two months away. Once that's there, I might start streaming again. Um, but until then, you can pretty much find me here uh, every Tuesday and occasionally uh, Mondays on Susie's channel or, you know whenever we just chat and just go do you want to do something yeah okay that's pretty much how the conversation goes <laughs> really uh, so that's how you get me apart from uh, Twitter where I'm uh, Hot Flakes Tom on Twitter and of course on Discord um, you know the Modifius channel follow Black Cat's channel usual stuff lovely, lovely. thank you so much uh, and Chief, go on. What are you up to? Oh, uh, well, you know, inciting wars and blood feuds and that. But when I'm not doing that, I'm over on my channel, which is twitch.tv forward slash Susanna Grace. That's Susanna with one N. And you can find me all over the internet at Susanna Grace. I'm on the TikToks. I'm on the YouTubes. You're doing I'm the TikToks the... now, aren't you? Yeah, I'm just doing little clips of uh, of my, my Twitch. Um, so yeah, I stream basically every weekday from 2 p.m. EDT until about 5 or 6, depending on how I'm doing. So tune in for that. A minute, we're playing a lot of Baldur's Gate. I might play Starfield tomorrow if I can mod it so it doesn't make me want to throw up, but we'll see. So if not, it's probably Baldur's Gate tomorrow. But uh, you should hang out for that. Nice. I will, I will. Uh, as for me, you can find me around the internet at RPG Webby, or you can find Modifius around the internet, pretty much at Modifius, pretty much everywhere. Head over to modifius.net or modifius.us if you want some US-friendly shipping for all of your Star Trek Adventures goodies. Uh, any news this week? Uh, we've just launched a kind of survey for Cohors Cthulhu, so if you want a little word in how we're putting a Kickstarter together, 
um, uh, then head over and sign up to our email list for that. You can go over to uh, cohorscthulhu.com, I believe, uh, or you can head over to modifius.net and head and kind of navigate to the main landing page of that to sign up to that. And head over to the Kickstarter page now where you can um, actually be notified, sign up for notifications for when the Kickstarter is going to go live on October the 3rd. That's the news of this week in particular. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for us. We will see you again next week for the next bit of the Tilakal saga, uh, where we're going to have all of the ships docked, all of the crews in a bit of a big old briefing situation. Until then, folks, take care of each other. Live long and prosper. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.